Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Marvel United Methodist Church. I give thanks for each and every one. It's either here with us or that uh, watching the live stream or we'll see the service later. Uh, several announcements. One, uh, Charmin Road back there uh, is, is uh, getting pictures for a new directory and if you need a picture taken, she's available to do that today. And then on February 20th, we're going to do a, a potluck meal and then go through the building and mark things that we are moving or are not moving. And let me tell you, the longer or closer to the move we get, the more stuff we find. And so we need to do some sorting out. You know, it, it, it's kind of like living in that same house for 50 years and you don't know how you got so much stuff when you want to move. Well, the church has been here since 1914. And we've done the same thing in the church as we do in our home. So, so February 20th. Also, uh, we are going to go ahead with those who feel safe to go through the, the new building today. But because there's still some snow out there and only about half the parking lot was plowed, uh, there's limited parking, we'll do the same thing again next week after church. So, so if you feel safe today, that would be great. If not, we're going to do it again so people can see what the progress has been. And uh, it's pretty exciting, as, you, as we've seen in the last month, just a lot of changes. Also, right in the middle of the bulletin, so if you go to the, the staple piece, there is an announcement about uh, meetings that we're going to be doing, dealing with General Conference. As you know, the United Methodist Church has been embroiled in a battle uh, over uh, how we deal with human sexuality, and so we're uh, general conference will be dealing with it. And so I just wanted to have some meetings to meet with people so you could understand. General conference for those of you that have not read up United Methodist is our ruling body that determines. Uh, we call it our our book of discipline, but it, it, it it's a, the book of rules that we live by, and we've really been in a battle the last 20 years. So to, there's a good chance that there will be a division in the United Methodist Church. So I would love to have you come and, and share. And uh, if you need a Zoom meeting, we'll, we'll do Zoom. And, uh, but I wanted to highlight that those four meetings. If we need more, we'll do more. So uh, please consider attending one of those meetings. Also, uh, well, I think I got it all and forgot. I could read my writing. So also, let's have a great day. Dolores? A mission moment. Okay, I'm just going to do that after the intro. Okay. Any other announcements that I failed to make? All right, all good?
privilege to highlight our food pantries this month. That's the February Mission Focus, the Anthony Lane Community Food Pantry, as well as the Zion United Methodist Church Food Pantry. I have a quotation on my refrigerator that reads, compassion leads to action. And I really think that our church demonstrates the truth of that statement very well because y'all have always been so very generous in supporting all of our mission projects. The Anthony Wayne Food Pantry assists about 100 families a month, while the Zion United Methodist Church assists about 35, with about 90 of them being children. They also accept monetary donations, and if you choose to do that, you could just write um, Food Pantry on your memo line. Better than I, I believe that God's Word really explains unselfish giving. So I wanted to share uh, two scriptures with you. The first is from Hebrews. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The other one is from Luke, and it is John the Baptist speaking. Whoever has two shirts should share with people who do not have any, and whoever has food should share it with those who are hungry. I know we'll all be blessed with this mission project. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. Please join me in the call to worship, and then we'll go right into our opening prayer. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us gather to worship our Lord. Amen. Let us set our minds on the right things, which is the greatest of all spiritual gifts. It is love. The Apostle Paul said, let love be genuine. Not vague, not lukewarm, not a mere attempt at friendliness. Jesus asked his followers to love one another as he had loved them. All the way to the cross, through abandonment and disappointment, our Lord never lost faith in his people. St. John said, God is love. St. Paul said, Love is faith, love is time. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not pride. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Let love be genuine. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that in the power of the Holy Spirit, that I may learn through obedience to develop the exquisite characteristic of Christ-like love in my life, so that you will be glorified and others be drawn to you through your love reflected in me. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand.
children to join me. Man, I wish everybody here this morning had your enthusiasm. That is great. I don't think any, any persons have run up to hear a sermon before, so thank you. Did I scare you? No. So how are you this morning? Good. So, were you out of school this week? Yeah. Was that good? Okay. <laughs> so, today we're going to continue what we were talking about last week after you go to Sunday school, and that's uh, God's love for us. And God tells us that He is always with us, so never forget that. Even when we can't feel or we don't know that God is with us, the promise is that God is with us. That means God is with you. And what we are to do as the church and your parents is to help you learn what it means to trust in God. So, I've got a question for you. Do you trust in God? Yes. Or is it hard, yes, or is it hard to understand what that means? And I'll tell you, a lot of us struggle with understanding what it means to trust in God because we can't see Him. But He's with us anyway. He's up in the sky. He's also right here with you. Yeah. He's not just in the sky. He's, we believe that God is everywhere. So he never leaves us. He's always with us. So never forget that. So as you grow up, as you get older, trust in God. So he's always with you, no matter what is going on in your lives. That's how much God loves all of us. And we give thanks for it. So is it all right if we pray together? Let's pray. So we bow our heads and close our eyes. And if you, if you do it at home and you hold your hands like this, let's do that too. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are with us all. I thank you for, for our children and ask that you continue to use uh, us as the church and also families to teach your love, to teach that you're always with us, to teach that you will never leave us. And we thank you for that. So bless and watch over the children that are here this morning and all the children of our congregation. As we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let's see. Here we go now. Our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 7 through 13. And some of you are thinking, well, you read that whole thing last week. Well, I did, but I only got half done with the sermon. So we're going to do the second half. Really, that's not quite true. I knew I would get through all the way through, all the way through it. So well, let's hear God's Word. Love never gives up. Never loses faith. Is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child, but when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Let us give thanks for the reading and the truth of God's word. Amen.
learning to love you more each day. Understanding what love means to love each other. Guide us. We pray for all those that are printed uh, in our bulletin day. Those that have ongoing illnesses, we continue to ask that you would heal them. Those that are struggling uh, in many different ways, that you would minister to them. and Use your church, the body of Christ, to reach out, to provide support, to love unconditionally. And we thank you. Lord, we lift up not only our nation, but the world as so many things are going on. We have to confess that sometimes we, we don't even know how to pray. We don't have the words. But we thank you that your Holy Spirit will guide our words. So guide us this morning. Guide us in every moment as we invite your Holy Spirit to, to empower us for your purpose to teach us as Jesus promised. That we may be your people for your glory, for your honor. We do pray for peace between Russia and Ukraine. We pray for protection of all the athletes in the Olympics and, and the impact that COVID has had on, on the Olympics and on all of us. Lift our spirits. Help us to focus on everything other than COVID and, and all the other thing, negative things that we can focus on, that we might focus on your light, focus on your peace, focus on your presence. Continue to guide us as a congregation as we move to a new beginning. We thank you for all the ways that you've provided. We praise you. So now continue to be with us as we pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue this uh, series on love, last week we started with the first half of 1 Corinthians 13, which is the, the, the what we call the love chapter. And in, in that first half uh, of this, this chapter, God lists, the attributes of love, what love is and what love isn't. And so in this half, he, uh, Paul continues to teach the Corinthians about love and, and hope and faith. So let us look at, at some of these. First, love never gives up. Now, many of us have been in situations where, where we were faced with a choice to continue to love someone or to deal with a deep hurt in us where we, we didn't really want to love another. But what God is telling us that true love never gives up. And so one piece of this is that the promise, I would say it's more than a promise, the fact is God's love never gives up. And if we might want to make it personal, God's never love never gives up on me, you, each of us here. God will never give up. He'll continue working in our lives. The Holy Spirit will continue to, to convict us and draw us and equip us that we might not only love God fully, but love others. But it never gives up. Now, I know some of us well enough here that some of us have stubborn streaks, don't we? Anybody want to confess that? Yeah, some of the people that are most stubborn uh, are not shaking their heads, yes. Uh, and when we get stubborn, we just don't give up, do we? 
We're going to bowl ahead no matter what, even if it's wrong. This, this is not a spiritual example, but one that I was thinking of is a few years ago we had a big snow and the car we were driving at the time got sucked into the, the deep stuff on our street. And I don't know how long I spent going forward and back. And forward. I, wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna get out and shovel and I wasn't gonna stay stuck. Now this is how stubborn I can be. When the smoke started coming off the tires, I should have known better. I was just hoping that if it got hot enough, it'd melt through the, out, the ice and go right out. But we do that kind of thing with lots of stuff, don't we? We get stubborn. We don't give up. So let's turn it then to the other side. It's that tenacity, that stubbornness that God says, that's how we love. It can never give up. So it, it ties into it never loses faith. So it, it, if, if love never gives up, our faith in God and our faith in others, especially those that have hurt us, leads us to a love that will not give up and will continue to put faith in someone even when the trust is broken. Now that sounds like, it, like too big a thing for us to accomplish, doesn't it? If someone hurts us, we think we have the right to give up on them. Love never gives up, and faith continues. How would, how would our lives heal spiritually and emotionally if we came to a place that we understood that I made a commitment out of love and that I will never let go of no matter what? And I will always put my faith in. I will never lose my faith in another person, and especially never lose our faith in God that is impacted by something that happens in this world. See, the whole idea of God's love is beyond us. It's a spiritual truth that's hard for us to, to fully grasp because it asks us to do things that goes against our very nature as human beings. Especially in a time in which we live where everybody feels that what they want to do is the right thing and it doesn't matter what anybody else says, we just don't care. And that can impact all of us. What happens when we truly turn to God's love to guide us? We don't lose faith in God. We don't lose faith in each other even when we fail one another. These are choices. Living by faith is a choice. Trusting in God is a choice. God invites us to make those choices that He may bless us in every circumstance. Love is always hopeful. So if we go back to one of those circumstances in which we've been hurt deeply, love never, never gives up, never loses faith, and is always hopeful. Hopeful for reconciliation. Hopeful for redemption. It took me quite a while in dealing with my biological father who was an alcoholic. I had given up. We were abandoned. So it took a long time to come to a place of saying, I forgive you. Now here's how confusing that can be. We were having lunch, and um, I was in my first church. This was probably 1982. And uh, he, he wanted to have lunch. And when he got there, he'd already been drinking. And so I said, I forgive you. And he said, well, maybe we can get together again. And I didn't have, I was young enough at that point that I used an excuse, you know, until he stops drinking, I'll never see him again. Don't we get that way? Aren't those real responses? But what God says 
what I had to learn sometimes the hard way is I choose to love. I choose the faith. I continue to hope for redemption and reconciliation. Years later, he had esophageal cancer and he wanted to see us three kids before he went in for surgery because he didn't know what was going on. And uh, he told me later, he didn't tell the, the girls this, but I visited him after uh, the surgery and uh, he, he basically said, you know, uh, 12 years ago I took my last drink. <sighs> but I couldn't get a hold of you. Now, it, here's, here's the mixed piece of all this, this story. Anybody who really wants to find a United Methodist pastor can find him. I mean, the information is public. It only takes one phone call. Another pastor has, well, back then it was books, now it's CDs or on the computer. It has a book and you can look up the person's name and you can find not only where they're serving, but their phone number. So, so it, it, it gets difficult. So it's interesting. I finally, um, our daughter pulled a book off of a bookshelf. It was, and Pam told her that it was one of my books when I was young. And she opened it and she said, Mom, I thought this was one of Dad's books. Who is Mike Brock? We were adopted and I never told her. Didn't think about it. The whole thing was out of my mind. I made a choice. It wasn't God's type of choice, but I made a choice. And so uh, cancer returned, and I decided it was time for Pam and the kids to at least meet, meet him once. It just so happened that we went to lunch, and where did he pick? The same restaurant as in 1982. When I said, I won't see you again in my cell, I didn't tell him. I won't see you again until you quit drinking. We go through those kind of really tough times. And the promise is, if we'll continue to focus on God, if we choose to love, choose to live by faith, choose to hope, we'll get to the last piece of what love is. Love endures every circumstance. So many, how many of us might have, there'll be different stories, but similar hurt, that we would like to put away, that we'd like to not just put away, but be done with, never to get it out again. The way to do that is to discover and to choose the power of God's love, the power of faith, the power of hope, and the endurance that God will give us through those circumstances and we'll be free. So ask yourself, do I want to be free? Oh, I can answer that. Of course we want to be free. Don't we? God sets us free through His Son. There's no greater choice of loving, living by faith and hope and endurance than Jesus' choice to go to the cross. Think of that. Today is a communion Sunday. So we're reminded of that choice that Jesus made for every one of us here. No matter what. See, God sets the example for us in His Son to never give up. To endure. But also to be built up and lifted up during that time of endurance by God's love, God's faith, God's Spirit. So let's don't ever give up on God's love. Even when life seems at its very worst. Because the promise is, God is with us. So I'll ask again, how many of us have some of those same kind of scars 
those same kind of hurts that have never been fully healed. And I can say personally, God will heal you. If you allow it. Because that's what love really is. So let's never, ever forget that God's love is beyond anything we can understand, but it's not beyond us learning more about it every day. The rest of this is... Uh, I knew this was going to be a long series. So, with communion and with going to the building, we get to read this scripture again next week. <laughs> Remember these words, the last verse, and we'll focus on some of these things next week. Three things will last forever. forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. As we celebrate communion today, as we receive the bread and the cup, we are reliving, we are being reminded, we are celebrating <coughs> what God did for us through His Son. Part of His plan from the beginning because it, it, the, the Word tells us that that God planned for our redemption before we were born. And it, this is the reason. The reason is God created human beings to make a choice, so He already had the answer in place if the human beings created would fail. The same is true for each of us. The bread and the cup are the reminder that God loves us and redeems us in every favor. When we fail, God is there to pick us up. God is there to redeem us. God forgives us. So let us pray as we prepare for the celebration of Holy Communion. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your truth. We now ask, as we confess before you, to forgive us. We invite your spirit to come within and all around to teach us the fullness of your love as shown in your son who suffered and died before we were born that we might be redeemed and know the glory and the peace and the power of your presence of your love. Amen. On the night that Jesus was eating that last supper with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it and then he took the cup and he poured it this the body and the blood of Christ we set apart and we consecrate it for its intended purpose and that is to remind us of his love as Jesus said this is my body this is broken for you so if you just peel the top off this is the body which is broken for you take and eat in remembrance of him Then he took the cup and he poured it and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. 
for the forgiveness of sin, for a, a new covenant with God, that we are redeemed. God sets us free. Take and drink. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us this holy reminder, this sacred moment of your presence. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us has experienced your light this morning. And no matter what we've gone through, we accept the reality that your love is beyond anything that we can imagine and that you love us. And Lord, we love you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please stand.